Hey boys, Trying Games here, and welcome to the new map, Arid. Now, this cured map was made by Renexon in collaboration with Danaby and Doug. This map is set in a fictional Middle Eastern setting, featuring lots of different ways to play, lots of things to prioritize, lots of quests, lots of guns, lots of everything. Even me, I'm impressed with the amount of detail that this map has to offer. It was a little bit confusing trying to learn a lot of this during the beta testing, so I'm here to give 10 tips just to make your lives a little bit easier when playing this map. Alright, let's get right to it. Alright, tip number one is accept every quest. Now, it may seem a little bit obvious, but it's very important to do that since all the items that they require are pretty, somewhat unfamiliar. And in case you do stumble upon them, you can just take them, go back to base, and, and uh, give it to them for more business opportunities, as one could say. Now, there are three quest guys that you're going to be messing with. This guy over here does weapon-related quests, one's for weapon-related stuff. These two next guys uh, focus on supplies, so they want some sort of material, uh, so something like that. And these guys right here focus more on just if you want a little bit extra money for doing a task, such as gain them a uh, certain uh, certain item they want, such as a hose or for some reason potato plants. And the rest of the guys either do uh, either do trades or barters. We'll get into barters later. All right, next tip. Now my second tip for Arid is get a backpack as soon as possible. Now when entering Arid, you will spawn with a fanny pack, just to give you a little bit of extra storage so you're not carrying everything in your hands. But due to the um, lucrative amount of items that you're going to need to progress through the game, this is not going to be super satisfactory. So what I re would recommend right off the bat is try to get a better backpack. Now solutions for this can either be as follows, heading off from... Heading off from this road all the way down to the main city and looking for a civilian grade backpack there. But our better solution would be using the bus, would be using the van driver to take you to West Side. Now West Side is located all the way from here down here and it's closest to Karaman Airfield. Now Airfield is, as you guessed it, a military grade zone capable of getting military grade guns, ammunitions, explosives, and you guessed it, clothing, such as the military uniform and the best of all, different military backpacks. Some of the best backpacks in the game. Pretty much all it is, is just a simple run. And we're here. Just be careful of these little tan stubs because those are landmines. Now, if you just take a left down here, you'll enter one of the first military barracks where there'll be plethoras of, of different crafting materials, supplies, and these lockers right here. They're pretty much the same as the baskets in Kuwait, where they are guaranteed to drop one item. See how I just got the knife? They're guaranteed to drop one item out of them, regardless of your loot, loot setting. This can include, yep, crafting materials, magazines, even guns, and like I said, backpacks. See, right here, I just got a backpack. Now see right here, we have the compact backpack, which is tremendously bigger than just the fanny pack alone, which means you can now pick up more items of all different sorts and not have any trouble taking them home and crafting them into what you want. All right, let's move on. Now, tip number three is obtaining the main tools for this map. Now, a normal unturn, you can just go completely eight mode and crush down military grade armor and guns with your bare hands. Here, it's a little bit different. You're gonna need some tools to help you with that. In the map, the tools could only spawn way back in these main cities over here. But thank goodness, Renexon blessed us with a guaranteed spawn in the safe zone. They're pretty important in obtaining a lot of essential essential supplies and whatnot, so it's just better to have them on hand when doing voyages to other cities and stuff. All right, so let's start here. The saw, this is more of a base building tool, able to you know cut down logs and a proper sturdy planks to build stuff but will be very very useful nonetheless right here is the hammer the hammer is capable of breaking down a bunch of junk items such as like dinnerware radios broken technology a lot of that a lot of just junk items basically so this is probably one of the most important tools you'll definitely want to remember this spot and then for 
The next tool is the pocket knife. Now this focuses more on cloth related stuff such as scrapping towels, backpacks, shirts, stuff like that. And over here is the blowtorch which is a pretty essential item when trying to craft things out of metal. So you'll definitely want to hang on to this. Now with all these tools that will lead me on to the next tip. So with your newfound tools that leads me on to tip number four which is scrap almost everything. Now on this map there is some junk. Like a lot and a lot of junk. With the majority of this junk, its only purpose is to be broken down into more core components they can use for crafting recipes. However, there are some things that you shouldn't scrap, and there is a pretty common technique with this, and it's either looking at the recipe browser with the item in your inventory, or judging it by its rarity. For an example, right here, there is a common white key in a rare radio. Now, which would you scrap? If you said key, then that's right. If you said radio, I mean you could, but it's not recommended because it's used in some pretty important recipes. I can't just list every single thing that you can, that you should break down and shouldn't break down, but just a common technique, just look, just look at the rarity. If it's above common, then maybe save it just in case. If it's not, then just scrap it. All right, on to the next tip. Alright, tip number five is knowing that every core resource can be stacked upon and some can even be placed. It's like the same situation with like cloth with Elver and Kuwait where you can put it or you can turn it into rope and then turn it back. Except in here, every item's custom. So for example, with 10 cloth fragments, that can result in a roll of cloth and it will only take up one by two spaces instead of a total of 10 spaces, which is, I mean, a pretty good deal but the best part is that some of these that some of the stuff for example like like this uh, stack of metal sheets here you can place it in the world but its main purpose is just to declutter all your your core resources and just place them so they're not taking up a lot of storage in the boxes so you can put in you know more important things like guns ammo stuff like that all right on to the next tip Now with Arid, there's actually some new crafting tools. Since Unturned doesn't really allow for a placeable workbench to craft exclusive items, Ren has found a clever way around this by making them into inventory items. Now there are going to be three main tools that will allow you to do different things, such as the toolbox will allow you to craft various amounts of machinery, the reloading box will allow you to create your own ammo, and the rewiring kit will allow you to make your own explosives. Now to start with the toolbox, this thing you can find commonly in industrial areas, but I had a fair amount of luck finding it in this building that I'm showing right now, which is I believe to be a hardware store. So if all else fails, just check the store and maybe you might be lucky. Now the reloading kit. This thing isn't super specific to where it spawns. Uh, I've been told that it has a low chance to spawn almost anywhere, but the chance increases a tiny bit if you can get inside these two rooms that I'm showing right now. However, you will need keys from Dead Zone to access these rooms. This is more of a late game strategy, so if you absolutely could not find a single reloading box, then this would be a last resort. But uh, there's one more method that we need to cover that might be more consistent, and that is purchasing the reloading kit. Now, if you have completed quite a few quests from the architect, he will offer a trading option for you to purchase the reloading kit, and if you don't have the toolkit, the toolkit for a certain amount of XP. It may not be the cheapest option, but if you're sick on relying on RNGesus, then this is probably the best bet. And now lastly, the rewiring kit. This is probably one of the more powerful kits of them all since they allow you to craft highly explosive equipment. The rewiring kit is found in both dead zones, so you'll, you'll need to get a gas mask before you can get access to this kit. All right, on to the next tip. All right, tip number seven is get yourself a car. Now, it's a no-brainer. 
more speed, you can traverse the map faster, like, of course, that's a that's a big deal. But one thing that's pretty common with uh, vanilla unturned cars is storage. And the storage kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, you can put in a few things, but it's not super viable. You just rather carry everything on you. But with this map, it's uh, constrictions with certain clothing and the need to get a ton of material all at once, uh, it can get pretty hectic. Now, one thing that's pretty new with cars is that they have huge storage. Pretty much 10 by 12, so 120 slots of space. Now that should be more than enough when looting like an entire city or something. All right, next tip. All right, know how I said last tip that you should get cars? Well, there's gonna be a ton around, so why not just destroy them? But with destroying cars, you get assortments of other stuff. For example, uh, different car parts. There would be dust filters, turbo chargers, engine pistons, and most importantly, metal parts. So if you have an established car of your own and you see a whole bunch of cars, just pop a few caps in it. Oh, and just the mini tips, sometimes some car parts can actually be sold to the mechanic vendor for some for a little extra cash. All right, next tip. Tip number nine is collecting every single dog tag you see. Now the way you find dog tags is through killing military zombies. So that means from any military location, as long as they're military, they have a chance to drop one of these. Now what you can do to save space is you can combine them into bundles, about 10 bundles, you can combine them into a pile. And yep, and now we pretty much saved a whole lot of space. But with all these dog tags, we can head up to this guy, Roland, and we can do a bunch of barters. Now, the more dog tags you have, the more valuable his barters will be. So what I mean is that for maybe for this ammo box, it only costs 10 dog tags is how much a bundle is. Only 10 dog tags for one box of military ammo. But if you want, let's just say this red circuit board, you'll need to give him a hundred dog tags. When you are gonna give that many dog tags to uh, this guy, he's gonna give you a more valuable thing in return. All right, on to the next tip. All right, my 10th tip for this map is looting caches. Now caches are these little containers that when you press when you press F on them will give you an item just like the uh, baskets in Kuwait. Now they're scattered all through the map and I do happen to know some like for example this one right here. You can go up to it press F and I got some steel mesh. That's pretty good. That's actually a really lucky drop but yeah you can find all sorts of stuff. I know I've found guns before inside them. I found uh, a bunch of materials. You can find uh, you can find some pretty rare stuff in there too. So honestly, every time you see one, just just loot it out. It's free loot. All right, now that's it for the tip video. I hope you guys honestly really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this video and stuff. I absolutely love this map, and I think Ren did a fantastic job on this. Possibly my newest favorite map but anyways thank you guys for watching and bye i need to go make a phone call